Okay. Yes, I'm sure now it is audible. Okay, so welcome all of you to the values workshop on decency. The number is 85. And as always, before we begin the workshop, let's try to explore this value for self. We all in this world of today have decent behaviors with each other. So this decency is not about that outward behavioral decency which we portray. Let me ask myself, at a deeper level, what is it to be spiritually decent? There could be many facets to this spiritual decency. And asking oneself, what are the various components of spiritual decency? And what else can I do to enhance my spiritual decency? And to explore both these aspects of decency, <clears throat> let's begin the workshop and invoke the Supreme Being to help us in this process. So, as always, we have a team of facilitators and interpreters. Facilitator Sister Anu from the west coast of Canada and Sister Priyal from the center part of India, Nagpur. The entire team of facilitators in the background tirelessly working and also the recorders. I forget to acknowledge sometimes them as well. So it's been a long journey. You'll have been with us. It's been 84 episodes so far on the workshops and the series. And you can see a gentleman trying to do something in front of you on the screen. So it's a quick icebreaker video. And uh, sorry, I can't see the, Sister Anu, you have to help me. I can't see the recording icon. So if you can, on the left and on the right, please don't go on that leftist and rightist going on in the political world. But just to give you a perspective on the left, there was something else and right, I think left was more unhealthy aspect and right was more of the healthy aspect. So related to decency, any quick sharing? So I can see something in the chat box. Let me just see what it is. Right. Oh, it's all Om Shanti still. Okay. <laughs> right. So please start sharing in the screens if you want to. We have a few minutes. And uh, thank you so much, Dr. Mehta, for joining. Hope you had a good recovery from two and two to three weeks. Thank you for joining. Shantili. Okay, so yeah, any of the facilitators want to make a start? <laughs> what related to decency did you feel this icebreaker video was? Sister Pooja sent this video actually, yeah. So it was very nice. I mean, I felt decent choices. He's making he's making decent choices on the right hand side when he was getting up early in the morning. Decent choices. And if you all could see his abs were developing, whereas that one had a big tummy. If you all could make out in the video. Okay. So yeah, go ahead. Okay. So uh, I what I could um, decipher from the video was whether you respect your body or not in a decent way, that that's how you uh, live a decent life. And respecting everything, like your time, your health, the choices that you make, gives you a decent life, probably. It's perfect. So Sister Anu is resonating, saying decency is equal to healthy choices. So as I told, we are speaking still on a very external aspect. Deepak Bhai is saying balance is important, yes. 
too much of work and too much of play both are harmful and Gita is saying uh, doing the right thing making good choices that's what we said decent choices respecting yourself mm. yes it's respecting our own body so still we are on the physical aspect of decency but good enough to start a spiritual workshop so I think uh, thank you so much all of you Deepak Bhai and Gita Bhai particularly okay over to you sister Anu for the first exercise thank you Thank you, uh, Brother Manoj. <clears throat> yeah, I think it is external level, um, physically, what are the good choices that makes us healthy? We've thought of that, but then spiritual recency is that what can make my mind, my heart healthy? Maybe the actions that we do from the thinking level um, are we decent. I think that would be our nice churning through this workshop so for the first exercise okay. <clears throat> we'll reflect on the components of spiritual decency so for that let's reflect on a person in our lives who has demonstrated spiritual decency we meet um, every day so many people we are inspired by many people so what is that we saw or felt in their behavior that was decent and that was spiritually decent um, that made us feel good feel healthy so I hope that is uh, making sense to all and I'm sure we will find a one or other person who has showed us demonstrated that spiritual decency so what are the components of spiritual distance? So as we reflect on that, uh, let's try to catch what are that aspects in that behavior or actions um, that demonstrates that are the components of spiritual distance. So let's take just um, one minute to reflect and then uh, this will ask you to share. Thank you. Uh, going in the silence. Sorry about that. But I'm sure we are listening to our music inside as we are reflecting on that spiritually decent person. More. Okay, we got few already points in the chart. So um, we would really welcome you to unmute and speak and share. Uh, so Dr. Ashok Mehta says that reflects typical urban life, urban life only at physical level. But then deeper, that spiritual decency. What would it be? I think he was, he spoke about the, the last one. <laughs> okay. uh, right. So yeah, we are slowly moving into the spiritual aspect. So let's see. Edna says uh, calm and peaceful. That's spiritual decency. User Singh says decency should be done in such a high manner that it is impressive, inspiring, and beautiful. Right. So it's like, you know, feeling. See, we are impressed. Positively, we are inspired, we, we feel beautiful, like that's that feeling um, of feeling good that tells that it's a spiritual distance in our behavior, in our energy. 
Kavita says being respectful by being in the present moment, right? So, yeah, if we are in the present moment, we'll not miss with whomever we are interacting, we can bring respect in that. So that is spiritual recency. Golden says being honest, polite, understandable, having love and giving peace. Beautiful. So many, uh, all these values that are coming, right? So that's what makes us feel good. Yes, Priyal, we can hear from you. Uh, the one person who I have experienced spiritual decency is from my father. Uh, in the way that he respects the differences that we might have in our choices of life and in selecting or uh, being the way that we want to live. So he has give, he's always given that space and always has trusted and respected uh, the choices that a person needs to make. So that has uh, really inspired me. For me, the de decency was to have that space for myself to be the way I wish to be. So that was uh, yeah, beautiful. Yeah, so that that you know the space that the spirit, soul, or I feel right. That's what uh, is the result of that spiritual decency and that makes you grow, that helps you really become you thoroughly, fully. Thank you. That was a beautiful sharing. And then Sonia Garg says, calm and good decision maker. That are the components of spiritual decency. And Brother Deepak says, no true identity. That's spiritual decency. We get caught up in our roles and achievements. Um, definitely that doesn't make us spiritually decent. That respect or, you know, respecting others, may we may miss. So no true identity. That's a beautiful uh, component, spiritual component. And Dr. Ashok Mehta says, follows principles of truth, non-violence, honesty, non-stealing, celibacy, Meditation and disciplined life. Beautiful. Um, thank you for listing it out all. So we can all take this list and reflect on it. So these are the spiritual components of this sense. Uh, Dr. Manoj brother says, have oh. okay. Uh, yeah, so there was some other message. Sorry about that. Um, anyone else who is uh, inspired to share the spiritual components you, you know, caught in this reflection? Would like to unmute and speak? Okay, so I'll read a few others that um, Merilza uh, says, um, an ethical person has deep consideration for everyone and everyone feels like they are part of. Beautiful. So ethic, ethical person, we say, because they show that spiritual decency as I'm catching, as for me, as I'm feeling, it is that spiritual space that we can make others feel, feel comfortable around us. And Gita Jumani says, honest, non-judgmental, and compassion. That are the components of spiritual decency. I think we have a few minutes more. Anyone who would like to share, you can share like Priyal shared, uh, who is the person who showed that spiritual distance in your life, whom you remembered in this exercise. I invite anyone who would like to share, unmute and share. Maybe Dr. Mehta, you would like to speak about I had the classical example was my maternal grandmother, uh, whose influence was tremendous in my childhood. Because she was the one who strictly followed the principles of Jainism. And she lived her life like an ascetic. So I think uh, that's the first five principles of Jainism, truth, non-violence, non-stealing, 
to possess only what you need and celibacy. Oh, beautiful. So, these are called the five main principles. Pancha Mahaprat, they call it. Mm -hmm. That's Sorry, who did you say you uh, the, these qualities they were? I mean, who was the person? Grandmother. Okay. My maternal grandmother. My mother's mother. Okay. Yeah. Beautiful to know. These are the five um, principles of Jainism. Yeah. That makes sense. And being in, inspired or in, influenced by these from childhood is great asset, I'm sure. Thank you, Dr. Nathan. So um, I again uh, get from uh, Deepak brother that Brahma Baba's life story uh, shows that, you know, the richness of the spiritual components of this sensi. Brahma Baba is the founding father of Brahma Kumaris. And Merilzia says something and uh, maybe Portuguese, I'm not sure. And I was wondering if uh, you can just quickly mention in the chat box the person whom you have thought of having spiritual decency. You can quickly mention in the chat box that we know who are your ideals demonstrating spiritual Sister decency. Sister Rena has unmuted herself. Okay, Sister Rena, you can share, please. Okay, somebody asked me to unmute, <laughs> so I'll share. So uh, here it goes. Uh, I, I just mentioned that it is about being considerate. So um, every one of us has some decency up to some level. Okay, uh, there's no, uh, you know, denying that fact. The one, uh, one incident that really touched my heart is I was reading about it somewhere. Uh, there was uh, a conversation between uh, Mama, whom we call Mama, uh, that is uh, the Jagdamba Saraswati, who was the first administrator, was having with Dadi Janki. And mama was visiting Dadi Chanki in Pune and uh, one day she had to go somewhere to meet somebody or something. So she called Janki Dadi and said, okay, uh, I'm going to so-and-so place um, and I'll return by this time. So Janki Dadi said, uh, Mama, you are Mama. You are the administrative head. What is the need for you to inform me? I'm uh, anyway below you uh, in that uh, hierarchy. So then Mama said, no, it uh, doesn't work that way. If we do something, okay, and if I go somewhere without informing you, and for some reason you needed me, you know, at some point of time, and then uh, you start thinking about where she might have gone and all those things, you know, you make uh, your, you know, that sankal starts happening, and then it uh, becomes a burden on me. So uh, it doesn't matter what hierarchy we are. If we inform others about our whereabouts and uh, what we're doing, you know, that way it is good so that we don't get burdened. So this uh, really touched me because uh, we have come across such situation uh, wherein we have given it or taken it, you know, a lot of times because of some reasons. So this uh, had really touched me. Beautiful example. Yeah, I think that is, again, we call sensibility. It is not... It is about knowing that uh, no matter where we are, which position, uh, yeah, there is a, a system that will work uh, properly when we consider both ways. But beautiful example. Thank you, Rena, for bringing that up. And yeah, um, Marilza, Marilza says it is her boss um, who inspired, who shows the spiritual um uh, decency and edna says one of the bk sisters yeah so i'm sure this is uh, how like when we take some time to reflect um we also identify the person as well as we identify or reflect through those qualities that we need to have in our um, personality or behavior so Beautiful. I'm sure everybody enjoyed it. Well, before we move on to the next, I would request Deepak Bhai to show whatever he has noted down. Also, Deepak Bhai says, she Baba was doing everything, but always remain hidden from this story. So he's bringing all that really uh, inside essence. She Baba or God, the Father, um, as we uh, practice at Brahma Kumaris. So he shows the spiritual adicency. So 
to the highest level. So we saw honesty, compassion, calm, peaceful. Um, that should be the behavior that is, uh, you know, the mannerisms that is impressive, inspiring, beautiful, um, being considerate, again, pol uh, being honest, polite, understandable, having love and giving peace for all. Uh, following principles of truth, nonviolence, honesty, non-stealing, celibacy, meditation, and disciplined life, knowing the true identity, being calm and good decision making. Um, again, deep consideration for everyone. So we are getting honesty, consideration for others, calmness. Um, that is what like few of the um, spiritual distancing components. So thank you everyone for sharing it. We also have honest non-judgmentalness and compassion are the components of let's see. Okay, so we'll move on to the next. I'll hand it over to thank you so much, all of you. You can see a beautiful lotus. That's the beauty of 3D animation, whatever, not 3D animation. So wonderful sharings. You'll have come out with a lot of qualities. As you can see, spiritual decency is an umbrella term which covers so many values. So let's, for the next five minutes or so now, let's sit back and try to meditate on this aspect of spiritual decency. I'll give you a few guided thoughts and see what comes up inside. So sit back, relax. Taking a deep breath in and out. Look at oneself, the beautiful point of energy, light energy that you are, the soul energy. And speaking of the soul energy, which is full of intrinsic decency within itself. And as we approach the soul in Raj Yoga meditation to have three faculties, the mind, the intellect, and the sanskars or the personality traits. So let me try to look at each one of these aspects of myself. First, have I got a decent mind? Which means a mind which is so pure so calm and peaceful all the time, respecting its own stability always. Is my mind decent enough not to create negative, but also waste thoughts? drain away my energy. So ask oneself, how decent is my mind? As we move on further, the second faculty of me, the soul energy, how decent is my intellect? Which means, does it really take me a long time to make decisions in life? Do I have to struggle a lot with having too many thoughts before making a decision? So ask oneself, 
how decent is my intellect how decent enough it is to make decisions instantly without wasting the spiritual energy that i have so the second question is how decent is my intellect lastly the third aspect which is very evident actually decent sanskars and behaviors and decent personality as all of us since we began the workshop we spoke about this external aspect action related aspect of sanskars so asking oneself this last question how decent am i in my sanskars do i get upset every now and then do i feel jealous do i hate someone asking oneself am i really a decent personality then if i still have these sanskars in sanskars of comparison competition criticism so now as we move into the action planning let me find out subtle ways and methods which i can adopt to enhance my spiritual decency So with this i'll just stop sharing the screen and we move on to the action planning over to sister priya thank you thank you brother manoj for taking us through such deep reflective meditation something to ponder deeply about moving on now to the action planning uh as we all know that action planning is an opportunity to convert what we have learned and to give it a thought how to bring the learning of a value into our life into the practical being let's move on now to the question of action planning take a few minutes to think about what are the various methods which can help me to enhance my spiritual decency so what are what can be the ways in which what could be the actions that we, i can take to enhance the expression of my spiritual decency please take a few moments you can write your sharings in the chat box or you can also unmute yourself to share another moment
Okay. There are a few sharings in the chat box, but before that, can we have somebody who would like to share, uh, unmute themselves and share? It inspires everybody when we share verbally. Yes, Adna, please go ahead and unmute yourself. Okay, hi, thank you. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, my personal take on it is uh, detaching yourself from any attachment that you have. Because when you have attachment to anything, for example, it could be getting success at your workplace or, uh, or any other materialistic attachment, uh, then the different cravings come in the in the in the person like you want to compete uh, you uh, uh, you want to compete or uh, you start comparing yourself and you kind of uh, lose uh, the quality of a of a of a soul so uh, it's not like you you shouldn't uh, go for success but you need to keep that balance that it doesn't take away your peace, right? So if it is balanced, it doesn't hurt anybody. It benefits you and everybody around you, then it is good. Because sometimes people get success, but maybe they step on other people to get that success. So you don't want to do that. So, so maybe just my thought here. Yeah. Thank you so much for sharing. That was beautiful. How how to be decent in even when you're working and not to harm somebody else to move ahead in your own life. Beautiful. Thank you so much. Is there anybody else who would like to share? Please unmute. Stories help us learn better. So it will be great if somebody can share. Okay, so I'll read a few sharings from the chat box. So Subhas says, follow Shibaba, that is to follow the teachings that the Supreme is teaching. Uh, Deepak says, to know myself better as to who I am in my real essence. And that is the way how we can improve our spiritual decency. Edna says, to detach from any attachments. Shanti says to increase the level of purity in thoughts, words, and deeds. Uh, sorry to interrupt, Sister Priyal. Uh, people are saying unmute in his, unmute button is disabled. It is not, Sister Rena. You all can unmute. The settings we have already changed. So please check from your side. Thank you. Go on. Okay. Shall I unmute you, Sister Rena? I have sent you a message if you can unmute. No, because I have in the participants myself again checked that the settings are. Oh. Okay, so yeah, it is it is fine, but yeah. I don't. Yeah. I could unmute only after I got the request to unmute. We double checked. Anyway. I don't know what happens. Think... <laughs> it changes from time to time, but yeah, it's good now. Thank you, Rena. This big sister. I think uh, it would be to uh, watch the thoughts, words, automatically actions will follow because uh, we have experienced that when we're creating positive or elevated or divine thoughts, you don't have to think about a lot. Or even if you're saying good things, you don't feel like speaking a lot because, you know, the diamonds, the precious gems are few. You won't, you know... Um, uh, give it handfuls. So when you're creating good thoughts, your your quantity of thoughts also increases. Uh, quantity decreases and the quality increases. So if, the, if that happens, then you don't have to watch your words and actions so much. So that will automatically. Okay, we lost Sister Rena. Can you uh, is it disconnected? Yeah, I think she's gone away and uh, yeah. okay. 
Okay. Uh, is there anybody else who would like to share? This bridge okay, so are... oh, Sorry. Please go ahead. Uh, Brijpal Bhai, you want to say? You unmuted yourself once. Geeta Jumani, you unmuted as well? No? Okay, I'll read the sharings in the chat box meanwhile. Okay, so Shanti says to increase the level of purity in thoughts, words, and deeds. Uh, Anil says calmness and good sanskaras helps to improve the decency. Bridgepal Bhai says follow Srimad. Srimad is the spiritual teachings that uh, we receive from the Supreme. Uh, Dr. Ashok Mehta says good company, reading and discussing spiritual books and strengthening values, avoid negative visual and auditory inputs. So the, health, the more healthy we consume the content, the healthier our thoughts and the more decent we become. Beautiful. Shanti says to have unlimited disinterest. Sister Anu says, being aware of my state of mind and thoughts and quickly dissolving any negative shades with kindness. Being present, being present moment conscious. Staying in this consciousness. Being aware of our thoughts consciously to check even the slightest deviation from the uh, divinity. Beautiful. Uh, Sister uh -huh. Gita says, meditate on who I am and my original qualities. Bridgepal Bhai says, Sh follow Srimad and detach from the self and others. Lara says, no, sorry. Okay. Sister Rena has shared a. Uh, uh, yeah. yeah, I don't know what's happening uh, because. What? We are just checking the settings and it's all unmute themselves. It's, it's, it's enabled. I mean, the settings are fine. <laughs> no, no. no. Chalan, now, uh, now this my video, video, I'm not able to start, but it is muted. Can I speak? Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah, you yeah. Are go ahead. Speak. Please go ahead. You see, the way is... Uh, the spiritual, this uh, decency is just first, we should learn to connect with the Supreme and then detach from the world and then you can have the, the spiritual decency. Grieve not for those who have crossed the path, mm -hmm. the death. More not who have left the planet Earth. Celebrate the life. Rejoice for the soul who has left so that you can emit positive vibrations for peaceful journey of the life eternal. That is the spiritual decency. And second decency, <laughs> second decency which you can uh, really do while, while you are alive, that is finish all the karmic bondages by becoming filled with the knowledge and knowledge you know I am the soul, you are the soul, supreme is the soul, connect with him, attain powers, emit positive vibrations and see the result. Own something. Thank you so okay. much for sharing. Sorry, uh, just to interrupt, sorry to interrupt. Actually, uh, all the participants, I'm so sorry, uh, we are just uh, disabling are their not, option. Yeah, I just not yeah, Bridge Bhai, just hold on. Just hold on for a minute. Anuj Bhai, let it be ticked. I don't know who is removing it. I am. Yeah. It has to be ticked. It is so, now ticked, means. Yeah, and... Okay, fine. Yeah, now we are good. Goes, okay, fine. Okay, go ahead. Yeah. And what about the video thing, Bridge Bhai? You can we, open. We, the video, video is not. Uh, video is still disabled. So. Just look at it into it, Anu sister. I don't know what's I'll happening. I'll look at it. So I'll just start but the I've, video. I've just done it. I've done it now. Just all of you just check yeah, it. Let, let me finish. Let me now it should be okay. Yeah. Okay. Fine. Sorry for this goof up. Carry on, Sister Priyal. Yeah. Still, still not. Uh, now it is. Now it is. 
No, it is. Yes, we can see you, Prajpal Bhai. Oh. Thank you for so sharing. I have, I, have already, I have already said two very important this uh, about the spiritual decency. One is yeah. one, one, once the person leave, leaves the planet Earth, we should not mourn the death. We should yeah. rejoice and celebrate because he, he has done his karmas and meeting the going for a peaceful journey for life eternal. That is spiritual decency. And second thing, while remaining in this world, I should finish all the karmic bondages by becoming filled with the knowledge. And the knowledge, all in the gyan know the knowledge. Then you can elevate yourself, your conscience, and the conscience of the other soul. And you will be in the blissful state. That is the spiritual decency. One should be decent with the self. One should be decent with the other. Decency is self-respect, humility, growth, change, peace, solitude. Bas. Om Shanti. Thank you. Thank you so much for sharing. Uh, yeah, Geeta Jumani, you would want to share? Yeah. Yeah, I would just uh, quickly add, like in worldly life or day-to-day -day life, we have decency as kind of accepted rules, behavior, so that we can leave and let leave and help uh, vulnerable people, show good manners. Otherwise, we can't really live amicably in our society. And for spiritual decency, I think when I say spiritual, you are decent. You cannot separate spirituality and decency or add just that virtue. So if I'm spiritual, that means I'm I know who I am. I'm a spirit. I'm a soul. And automatically, I'm focusing on my all qualities. If I meditate, well, usually I focus more in meditation on that, that who am I? That first lesson and the last lesson, I still continue. So originally, you will have those, your original qualities. And of course, you are decent. That's what I think. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for sharing, Gita Ben. Okay, so there are a few sharings and then we'll go on with the workshop. So, uh, Lara says, looking at myself, checking my thoughts, observing what my eyes are seeing, the sanskars that I have to transform, starting in practice to think better. So, to live, chances to live and let others live their life their way. So no subtle desires to know anything about the others. So those are all beautiful messages. Thank you all for sharing so enthusiastically. Can we now please have uh, Deepak Bhai to have a... I'm so sorry, Sister Priya, if we cannot show have... Deepak Bhai, we are already late by three minutes. Okay, okay, so okay. Just... okay. So we'll I'm move sorry on. sorry for that. Yeah, yeah. Not... Yeah, we are okay. Really late, yeah. Thank you. Sorry for that. And okay, sorry for this goof up. I think uh, this mute unmute thing was happening, but now it's all good. Okay, so let's move on to, we have less time. So we'll see how much we can cover. So as all of you know, we had this beautiful senior Rajogis with us, Sister Dipti from South Africa and Brother Ashish from UK. Okay, so all of you all have spoken a lot about decency, spiritual decency. It's all good to know that you're practicing that already. So the first thing which uh, both of them had to speak, they started with self-respect. It will be coming in the next slide. But it is like when we have to really go through many things in life, it's important that what is the most important thing that time. And most important is to take care of the self, the mind. And decency, they said, is the mannerism of how I treat myself in times of adversity. Am I really having fast thoughts? Am I stressed? Am I dash, 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 so on. So if I can really pick up on those things and make sure my mannerism, then the mind, how my mind is behaving, the mannerism of my mind, that's more important here. And they also said the famous uh, quote, which is that, that there is always pain, but suffering is optional. So I am the one who's deciding how decent I am in my thoughts in taking care of my mind. If despite having adverse situations, I'm not suffering from inside. 
And uh, I think Sister Dipti said that there's a quick three-step formula for this. It is step back. We do this in the Vihasa workshops as well. We call it the SOS approach. Stand back or step back. Observe the situation from a distance as a detached observer. Or I must say not from a distance at the same level, but from a higher level. Then the situation becomes very tiny and then steer. So that's the SOS approach, what we call. That's the first formula. The second is reflect deeply on the experience you have had. Because every obstacle, everything which is challenging, it comes to teach you. We do this in the SWOT analysis, as all of you know. SWOT, that is strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. So every challenge, every threat coming into my life is basically an opportunity giving me an experience. So can I, from that experience, from that uh, threat or from that challenge, learn something and reflect deep on that traumatic experience which I had. And third thing is tune into emotions and feelings because nowadays people are not able to pause. The thoughts are so fast and immediately they are followed by emotions and feelings. So can I really dissect out, can I slow down my mind and increase the space between the thought and the feeling. So that way I can tune into my emotions and feelings in a better way and respond adequately or appropriately. Then we start with the self and the most important here is I think Sister Dipti was again and again harping that how much am I in my self-respect is directly proportional to am I being decent with myself? And for this, she mentioned, mentioned that Regular meditation will help us to clean out our inside. And she mentioned this again and again about this uh, quote that do not throw your toys out of the cot, which basically means that I don't need to just be very vocal about getting upset and show it out. And can, I, can I deal it with royalty as well? That's what it was about this thing. As far as relationship with people are concerned, she said that the first energy is self-respect. The second is decency with others, which means I should not be compelled to be nice. Nice always doesn't mean to be honest. Sorry, it doesn't mean to be... I'm sorry, I'm getting distracted by some mobile phone. Uh, so I'm sorry for that. I'll just rephrase what I was saying. So nice means to be honest with oneself with my feelings, with my emotions, what am I feeling about others, about a threat or a challenge in my life. And niceness doesn't come out of just the regard, which is like if I have fear of someone's position, someone's uh, post, I get nice to him because I know I have to respect him and regard him. So it is something, an internal thing, it comes from honesty. And all of you have covered honesty as a value for decency in the workshop as well. She said, take time to understand people. And very beautifully, she said this. It's like what we call in Hindi, uh, Ras Khelna, which means, Ras means to dance. And this is the dance of sanskars, whereby if I don't understand the other person's rhythm, so physically, if you're dancing and if you're not in sync with the person in front of you, you may stamp on his toes, you may step on his toes, his or her, and you may, on the contrary, disturb the entire sequence of the dance. So same thing, if I'm not able to understand people, I won't be able to perform well. I won't be understanding what their rhythm is inside. So that's important to understand people and have a good spiritual dance, what we call the dance of sanskars. At Brahma Kumaris, the spiritual teachings tell us that while you are in communion with others, have the ras of sanskars. Then also there needs to be a dignity in relationship and that dignity can come when both of them, the ones who are in relationship, they are operating from a very full state, which means the state of mind is very pure and elevated. And she also mentioned that our journey is not just about our challenges, but it's also more about investing in people on a daily basis. And this investment is not about some financial investment, it's about valuing people 
while doing their time and just trying to understand them, respecting for who they are and even respecting the differences if there are any in whatever they are showing to me. So we should respect their differences as well. Uh, I'm mindful of the time, so I have five more minutes. Let's see how much I can cover. A few aspects of decency is be present for one another, not only in tough times, but also in times otherwise. Value people's time and respect their time. Be open-hearted, you'll have covered this, being compassionate, generous, kind, all is a part of being open-hearted. And hold the space <clears throat> for others to trust you. And I think it's a beautiful one. We need to give the space as well to people because sometimes we really impinge a lot into people's spaces and don't give them that time to heal themselves. So let us give that space to them as well. Though not being, not showing them that we are insensitive, but be detached from that and make sure that they know that you are there for them all the time, but you have given them their adequate space as well. And I think this was the quote which Sister Dikri said, the real decency is about how we navigate our journey. I, the soul, am on a journey, that journey. And inner decency is about how I maintain my royalty when I'm going through things which I'm going through, which means all the difficult times in life which I have to face. Okay, so we have four minutes. So I think the questions were quite interesting. The first one was, a thief has come and robbed me. How can I really respect and behave decently with a person who's robbed me? So here it comes down to Brother Ashish. I remember said that we don't, we have to separate the person from his or her action because every soul has intrinsic goodness within. And let me not condemn them for what action they have done. They have lost their way. He has stolen me or robbed me for some reason, maybe money, etc., etc. But I need to respect the person. The consequences of their action, here comes the, I must say, the deep karmic philosophy which is taught at Brahma Kumaris in the Raj Yoga meditation, seven day post that each to his own, whatever a person is doing, he or she has to bear the consequences. So I don't need to take law in my hands. And on the contrary, when a person, say a robber, for example, has robbed me, he actually has committed a sin. And I need to actually have a lot of mercy on him. And this mercy will in turn help that person to heal himself. But doing all this, it has to be a balance. We don't have to be so naive that let people take disadvantage of our generosity and sort of come and rob us all the time. So we have to equally have that balance in our life. And a very interesting question is nowadays people are on social media all the time, all sorts of social media apps. And you know those buttons, the like, the share, the comment, subscribe, all those people want. They need to see those. And people can sometimes end up having a war of words on social media and disrespect each other, be indecent with each other. So how do I deal with this? Uh, should I just uninstall all the apps and be totally aloof from society, particularly on the social media? I think that's a good approach in one way if you can't deal with whatever comments are coming. But here, uh, if I can read the last line first in the answer, she said that the soul needs the power of discernment. I need to decide that which app is having the potential for me to be on it for my benefit, or is it really worth leaving it? So it's my thing because people also on WhatsApp and nowadays WhatsApp has become, I must say this, it has really got many features where people can keep themselves hidden. You know that if you send a message to someone and whether that person is red or not, the ticks don't go blue. You can make yourself hidden. So, well, that's all technology, but I think rather than the physical technology which we are speaking here, our inner technology is, despite reading all comments, despite getting some disrespectful remarks, indecent conversations from people, can I really draw a line inside? I need to know my self-respect. And I should not get affected by what people are constantly doing on social media. 
Okay, so my time is up and I'll just stop sharing the screen here. And okay, so I hope uh, Sister Wadi is here. Okay, here you are. So before I pass it on to you, Sister Wadi, I would like to introduce you. You have been with us, I think, a few years ago. You'll be telling us soon, I know that. But I need to introduce you again to the audience. And Sister Wadi is a very senior Raju. He almost, I must say, 50 years into knowledge now. And she is one of those first students of Dadi Janki, who was so inspired by Dadi Janki's company. And also, Sister Wadi mentions that she had a profound experience in Madhuban, which made her dedicate. Madhuban is our, for people who don't know, Madhuban is the Mount Abu campus, which we have of Brahma Kumaris. Our international headquarters are there. After that, it's London. So after having a profound experience there, she dedicated her life into service. And then it's been almost 50 years now. She has been a spiritual student and a teacher. And she works as, she serves, not works rather. She serves as the coordinator of Brahma Kumaris in Florida and has spoken at many events in South Florida. And if I want to tell you a few uh, programs which she was a part of, and she's still an active member of that, it is the Evo, I-V-O-H, the images of images and voices of hope. And now it's called the Peace Studio in South Florida. And she's also involved as a core team member of that. And as always, uh, we are speaking about decency. So let me just also introduce and share a poem about her. So Sister Wadi in her service is full of spiritual decency. That's because she's abundantly gifted with proficiency. In her dealings, there's always a lot of transparency. And indeed, there's no scope at all for complacency. Her working style is filled with utmost efficiency. That's because in her behavior, there's no deficiency at all. <laughs> Living in the... <laughs> Sorry, I'll just take a minute and let you laugh as well. So living in the confluence age as a regency where there's absolutely no insufficiency. Her talks are full of power and coherency which radiate and vibrate with a spiritual frequency. And finally, she's indeed in her effort having a lot of consistency and she asks all of us also to be the same and avoid leniency. So there you are. And <laughs> thank you so much for being with us. It's wonderful to have you again after I think a gap of two years. <laughs> All yours. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Manoj. <laughs> um, your, um, your welcome has, of course, the immediate result of totally disarming one because it is so unexpected and it comes with such sincerity and such sweetness um, despite the fact that we've never actually physically interacted with each other and so even as you were mentioning all of those things we all know that it's really what you're saying although ostensibly you're saying it for me, but the truth of it is you're describing yourself. <laughs> and I'm quite sure that anyone who knows you would agree with me and that that would just be um, a limited version of all of the qualities which you have. And I'm very uh, touched by the fact that this project with all of the virtues has been running for so long and it came as you told me a little earlier as um, at the same time as the, the, the COVID thing. That's when we all became very familiar with Zoom as an alternative way of interacting and uh, serving and connecting with people. And that now is a number of years. And I quickly scanned the list 
of all of the the virtues that had been taken up by countless instruments, teachers, uh, lecturers, students, and workshopped uh, from A through Z, each and every one of them. And all with no doubt the aim of deeply understanding the virtue and its application and the degree to which one may or may not have it and how to avail oneself of it. And so I would imagine the result of um, all of these virtues that if we were all expressing them and we were all the embodiment of these virtues, what kind of a culture would we have? What kind of a nation would we live in? What kind of a world, what kind of a garden would this be? There would be no need at one level to even think in terms of certain virtues because there would be no one or nothing to test those virtues. <laughs> and so I guess the only thing would be love. <laughs> that would be at the end of the day, it would be a culture of, of love. And then that love would be filled with each and every single quality um, that has been spoken of until this point. And so um, I think um, when this topic came up and, and we discussed it, or when I suggested it, I feel that decency is something that is perhaps underrated. And uh, it is such a, a, a basic component in terms of do we want to call it a virtue? I'm not even sure if we would call it a virtue. And is it something that's inherent? Is it something that's taught? Is it just a behavior? Does it simply come down to, to good manners? You know, many years ago, there was a situation here at the center and there was two little kids. There were two little kids and one was about four years old and the little boy may have been about three and a half, probably a little less than four. And uh, the little boy was given a magic wand and the little girl, they, they didn't know each other. Um, the little girl started crying and kicking up such a fuss because she didn't get the magic wand. She was practically inconsolable she was really having what we would call a hissy fit you know and uh, nothing her mother could say or do would make any difference and then while all the adults were observing this scenario the little boy as I say and he wasn't even four he went over to her he put his arm around her and he gave her the magic wand, which she instantly <laughs> accepted, <laughs> didn't think. And so where did that come from? Was it innate or was it something that was learned? He was too young to have been taught in a sense, you know, what decency is. And you can see in that, that his behavior wasn't just that he did the right thing, which, which you can't even talk about for a three-year-old or a four-year-old, but there was an element of compassion. Each quality is filled with so many other things. And so to me, it was, um, it was the decent thing to do that I would maybe have expected were it two adults, but not two children. And so it was such a, a profound lesson or, or question for me. Did he learn it? Was he educated? 
uh, did his mother teach him? And she was as surprised by, by the action as everyone else. But it almost seemed like as if it was an innate thing. And so I do see decency as, uh, as a behavior. You know, sometimes when we reflect on what it is that, that the supreme source of energy wants to teach us, being a little bit reductionist, <laughs> I feel that what what God has to teach us, um, and I, I don't mean it to sound mundane, but it's simply good manners. And so not good manners in the form of just etiquette, because that can be a social construct and may be different in this person's land and that person's land. But the manner, the way of doing things a manner that comes from an attitude, a manner that comes from perhaps even an old memory that lies in the soul itself and that intuitively knows what is the right way to behave and that that should be guided by love, empathy, compassion, um, respect. And so these seems like very, very fundamental things. And yet I do sense that the most fundamental thing that that supreme source of energy teaches us is respect. And that respect first and foremostly, is for our own selves and reminds us that there may have been a time or that there was a time when our behavior and our way of being matched that of the divine itself. And so then decency for me is one of the building blocks of what hopefully will be a new culture, a new way of being. Decency takes into consideration the other. Decency will not be tainted by mere selfishness or arrogance, there'll be um, an aspect of generosity. There'll also be an intuitive understanding of karma, of cause and effect. And they may be the, the expression of decency. You know, as I say, it could be just in good manners, like, holding the door open for someone, giving someone your seat on the bus. These are very, very simple things. But the other quality that, that goes along with it is consideration. And I think when there is this practice of, of decency and um, respect, that it's then becomes like a speeded up aspect and that just automatically you don't have to give, you don't have to weigh something that is almost like automatic. So it can no doubt be a learned behavior, but I really do think that decency can morph into heroism. It can morph into um, nobility, into something much larger. You know, I remember um, someone telling me a story once where they had been in, uh, um, I, I guess, a bar and 
there was a a fellow who was very drunk and he had smashed a bottle on the uh, counter and he was about to attack presumably the woman that he was with and my friend got into in between this was something that had happened with this person i i only came to know them after being uh, involved in this spiritual life and they've been involved in this spiritual life so for them it was a way before in their youth and he got in between the man with the smashed bottle and the woman and prevented anything untoward from occurring. And in fact, at that time, I had asked him the question. This is the story he then told me. I asked him if he would be willing to die for a friend. You know, it's a strange question, perhaps. But I asked him if he would be willing to die for a friend. And this was the story he told me. And in other words, at the end of it, he said, Wadi, if I was willing to die for a stranger, and you're asking me if I would be willing to die for a friend? And so again, what was it that compelled him to do that? You know, at one level, it was an act of decency, but ultimately it became something of heroism because both preventing any harm from coming to the woman and preventing the man from performing a, a horrendous act. And so this is the thing, as I say, with, um, with decency, that um, it, it has a goodness, it has a kindness, and um, it, it doesn't have so much selfishness in it. You know, what prevents decency? Can we say that today that people operate a lot out of decency? The expression is common decency, or this is human decency. You know, would be to maybe inform somebody you're not keeping the appointment or you know, passing on information or to contribute something. Um, I don't think there's as much decency. The, the possibility is there, but the expression of it has been perhaps subdued. And where, you know, I was seeing, I just came in at the end of the, uh, the question and answer part. And I was seeing something to do with like social media and the inference of like bad behavior where people are so, so quick to feel insulted and to take offense and then to justify a similar behavior, to act in the same coin. And so decency, one of the things, you know, it's that, that idea um, that uh, a first lady mentioned at one point, and she said, when they go low, we go high, <laughs> you know? So, but the tendency, the old fashioned way, or what in the Bible would have been um, understood to be an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth, although I'm not sure that the way that it's often understood is what exactly was meant. I think what they were saying is that there is such a thing as karma. They weren't advocating that if somebody does something bad to you, you need to do something equally bad to them. And so it's um, the old way is with revenge and malice, whereas the awareness that I'm trying to participate in the creation of, of a new humanity, a new way of being. And so it does not afford me the luxury 
of those kinds of attitudes, but rather how to draw on some degree of patience. And one of the things that I see when there is just the thought of doing the right thing, of aiming for the higher ground, it's almost as if there is an instantaneous assist. Now, don't ask me where the assist comes from. It could be from on high. It could be from the person next to me. It could be from some circumstance or another. But I really do feel that there's the whole thing of karma kind of, I think, is speeded up at the present time and that it works both detrimentally and we all know the situation where where we had a bad thought about someone or there's irritation or anger and you stub your toe or you trip and it's almost okay instant karma but the flip side works as well in that as soon as there is the thought, and as a yogi, we are encouraged to connect with that supreme source of energy. And as soon as there is the remembrance of that and all that it entails, which by its very nature is pure goodness, then it dissolves, it dissolves in a heartbeat that less than holy thought that I may have been having for or about someone else. And it's as if a portal, a portal opens and that some kind of, it's kind of like turning on a faucet of the purest, best water imaginable. And that that portal, just by your thought, that's what opens the portal, is your pure thought, either of the remembrance of God or of your own self-respect or of love, any of those things. And then there's some kind of help that automatically comes. It's like there's a shower, <laughs> there's a shower, you know, the ceiling opens and, and there's a shower that is going to aid and abet you in furthering the nobility of your thought or of your intention. And so decency will have no ill will for anyone else because you intuitively understand that if you have these sentiments towards anyone on whatever basis, religion, gender, race, anything else, then it is going to come back to you. You have diminished yourself. You have even let yourself down in your own eyes in a manner of speaking and so one of the things when you act from a place of decency it's easier to live with yourself because if you're not coming from a place of decency you have to justify what you just did or what you just thought or what you allowed to happen and so you're able to live with your own self and I think that with other people, when they see you operate from a place of decency, which, as I say, means good wishes for everyone, not favoritism, or this one gets to play with me because they did this and this and this, but that you're equal in terms of your vision for everyone, then not only will your behavior, maybe, maybe, and you're not doing it because of this, act as an inspiration for them, but they will trust you. They will trust you. 
And so that this thing of decency, yes, it is like a building block, but there's so many other things that um, are there in its wake. Someone mentioned the other day, and I liked it, the idea of decency being like a ladder, you know, and that each act that you perform from a place of decency, it's like another rung <laughs> on that stairway to heaven, so to speak, you know, that you're climbing up. And um, okay, it may not work in other languages, but there's a very similar word to decency. Sometimes when we think of the flip side of decency, not so much indecency, but dissent. The, the two of them, except for one letter, they're spelled the same way. So there's decency and then descent. And so if I'm not operating out of decency, I'm not increasing, I'm descending. I'm not going up the ladder, but I'm coming down the ladder, you know? And in my coming down the ladder, it makes it that little bit harder perhaps for others to see their next rung as well. So, um, you know, what gets in the way of, of uh, decency, behaving in a decent manner? Um, I think poverty. And I'm not talking now about, about poor people because we all know that very often the poorest of the poor will be the most decent, will be the most generous, but it's where you feel that there won't be enough for you. So there's a kind of a, a poverty um, consciousness. There's a fear that, you know, if I do the right thing, if I contribute, if I, you know, speak up or whatever, I'll get in trouble or that there won't be enough um, that, that my generosity won't extend that far, that I can only love so much, I can only respect you so much, that I put the limits. I put the limits on, on my decency. So some kind of uh, fear, you know. And the thing with decency, it's not self-serving. You know, it's not... Um, tinged with, um, you know, ego. And, and then also I was thinking that, um, you know, I'm remembering a time in, in my own life, um, again, way before, <laughs> but rather than get into the detail of it, which I'm sure it would not be of interest to any of you, but that um, never, you can never justify the circumstances that you find yourself in as an excuse not to be decent. You know, that if, if decency is, is there in you, you will not allow circumstances to compromise that decency do you understand because sometimes you know say oh well you know because i didn't have any money that's why i stole something or because nobody would would uh, pay attention to me you know i i had to insist i had to be uh, aggressive you know and so no as I say, it's such a simple thing and such a uh, an underrated thing that we may miss it. And yet it is such a component part of, of uh, building the right culture of contributing to your own sense of self that self-respect without decency doesn't work it's not self-respect then 
it's the illusion and it's tinged rather with some kind of arrogance. And I'm not talking now about being so selfless that you let people walk all over you or that, you know, that you're always the poor one. No, no. In fact, uh, the decency will have a very healthy sense of self-respect and it will not have fear in terms of its expression, you know. They won't allow that to come into play. So, um, you know, when they talk about uh, decency, it won't have the, the tendency to be insulting. Um, it, it, it won't be abusive. You know, whereas nowadays language, you know, even the, this word um, decency would be used in relation to how one dresses, you know, like that they're not dressed decently or whatever. Perhaps it just means appropriately, you know, what is appropriate in a particular setting or whatever, you know. And so, um, anyway, that's sort of, I think, is there anything more to be said about decency? I think that's a lot, no? <laughs> Where do we go from here? Okay, so you've done, is it? Okay. <laughs> right. So we have uh, 15 more minutes. So maybe we'll take a few questions and I'll invite uh, the participants. You'll have the beautiful chance to interact with Sister Wadi. You can unmute and speak. Uh, I'll just ask you uh, one more question. Uh, I mean, a few questions. When someone is rude with me, how do I deal with them? <laughs> um, well, you have to make sure that you don't exchange the same in the same coin that you're rude back again. And it can be a way of examining your own self and seeing how quickly your ego got involved <laughs> and then having been touched, what does your ego want to do? It wants to react. It wants to come back with a smart, um, you know, jive perhaps at the other person. And so I, I just think that, um, I, I, again, the world today, uh, People, all of us, are running on, you know, not even half empty tanks, but there may be only an eighth of a tank left in the, um, in one's heart or uh, whatever, because there's so many assaults and the essential component, again, I think what we come back to is to do with respect, right? And so self-respect. Now that other person, um, I think the thing that can change things is when I can somehow communicate that I respect you. And that I think that makes a difference. It's a question I sometimes ask people um, do you feel that you're more in need of love or respect? And in general terms, I really see and proven by the answers that I get, people are in need of respect. Um, they want respect from other people because they don't have enough for themselves. And so for me, it would be that thing of, again, checking myself and see where my ego got involved, if it got involved. And then, you know, if the person's insulting me, what's the reason? Maybe I did do something wrong. You know, am I willing to, you know, again, we get defensive. We're not very good at taking criticism. And am I willing to immediately say which bursts the bubble immediately. 
you are right. This was my mistake. Beautiful. So, uh, Sister Edna, yeah, go ahead. You had a question. Yeah. Hi, good morning. Hello. I just, I, I just wanted to ask, how do you deal with difficult people who you need to deal with with them every single day? You try mm. to break the ice and you try to be very humble to them uh, and you give them the respect they need. You're doing everything to make the relationship work. And, but the other, the other person or the other soul is not willing to, to, to cooperate. Uh, so how you, like you do it, then you get tired, you pick yourself up and you do it again. And you, and, and you don't see anything changing on the other end. So how, how do you go about it? How can you strengthen that relationship? What, right. what am I missing? Um, I'm not sure you're missing anything. And, and again, every situation is different, but, but we kind of position it in terms of I'm the good guy and they're the bad guy, you know? And it's never as, you know, black and white as that, is it? And for me, many, um, uh, quite some time ago, this awareness of um, a difficulty in relationship, um, I, not so much I wouldn't even put it in terms of a difficulty in relationship, but in other words, it came down to the same thing. I wanted this other person to behave in a particular kind of a way. And so um, year in, year out, and I'm saying, look, I've told you 10 times, I've told you 20 times, I've told you 100 times, and still you keep doing the same thing. And then one day I finally got it. And that was that you may want them to change, but they don't want to change. And so... Why am I imposing my way or my assumption of how something should be on them? And further, that even though I was saying, you know, I've told you for the last 10 years or whatever, and you haven't changed. But you know what? In those 10 years, I hadn't changed either. And so it was like, it was a revelation for me, and um, I'm not saying that I changed entirely, but at least um, the recognition that I was trying to impose something, and and again, or that I will be good with you up until a certain extent, or for a certain period of time, but then you have to give something. But it doesn't work like that either. You know, my contract, my contract with, with God is um, self-change. If others change by way of inspiration <laughs> uh, or some behavior that's being modeled, great. But it can't be my objective to change somebody else. And so back to this thing of, of decency again, or any quality for that matter, a measure of it will be um, how deep it is within me is only seen by how I deal with its opposite in somebody else. Do you understand? So in other words, I might say um, decency is my sanskar, honesty is my sanskar. And that's why I'm so bent out of shape when you tell lies. No. Rather, if I'm bent out of shape by your lies, I don't have the sanskar of honesty. I'm trying to instill it I'm thinking that if everybody else is honest, it will be easier for me. 
And so whoever is in front of me, they're not there by accident. Um, they have a reason for being there. Okay, you have situations where, yes, you have to move away. You have to move away where it's intolerable. It is not your self-respect to stay in that situation. But for the most part, no. These are people that we encounter uh, on a daily basis. And so they ultimately are the ones who are going to give me my certificate. And so I have to just keep on um, improving myself to where um, I'm either immune to what it is that the other person is doing, or when I really, when my sanskar or my virtue is a divine virtue, you know, so one thing is a virtue, another thing is a divine virtue. When it's a divine virtue, then there will be perhaps transformation in the other. But at least my transformation will have happened. I'm not sure if that's helpful, but well, thank you so much. <laughs> pleasure. Right. It's, it's a beautiful answer. I think there's another question which I'll take and then I'll go to Sister Rena. She has also got another question. This question is in relation to social media. You touched upon that. But the question is that I'm very vulnerable. Probably it's the age where we are. Very fast thoughts going on. And I'm so vulnerable to people's comments and what sort of thing going on social media. How do I decrease my vulnerability? Can meditation help me? But when I meditate, that person comes to my mind again and again. So I don't want to meditate. That's the question. <laughs> Uh, yes, yeah, like someone once said, you know, if I uh, if I love you, you're forever in my heart, and if I don't like you, you're forever in my head. <laughs> you know, that uh, um, that your mind goes there again and again. Um, I, again, very wary of the whole thing of social media and and. Uh, how huge an influence it is or it can be. And, um, you know, it, it, you use the word vulnerable. And so it, it's a little bit like sensitive, that sensitive can have a good connotation, that I'm sensitive and that I pick up and I'm able to, to use that sensitivity to maybe help someone that I'm, the sensitivity is more of an intuitive nature, but then the sensitivity that gets uh, upset and is, is very volatile and as you say, vulnerable. And the same thing with vulnerability, because um, so everything can, everything can be changed. And for me, I see vulnerability uh, also in a good way, you know, that uh, vulnerable, allowing yourself sometimes to be vulnerable is, is a measure of uh, honesty, you know, that, but the kind of vulnerability that, like the sensitivity, that somebody says something, somebody implies something, and I get upset, then then I really, just like again, if, if I have allergies, then I don't sit under the trees that are, are blossoming or whatever else, because I'm going to have an attack. And so by putting myself out there in terms of social media, if I have that kind of vulnerability, then um, I, I, it's not going to, by confronting it it's not going to strengthen me i really do need the meditation because meditation is going to um it, it's a very good exercise in um reality what's real and what isn't and so it's amazing when we talk about you know social media you're not even dealing with a with a real person in a manner of speaking, you know, it's an image and it's, 
anybody can say what they want. You know, if, if you were face to face with someone, you wouldn't say those things. You wouldn't you wouldn't behave in that way for the most part. But there's a kind of a, um, you know, by being um, just on a screen, it's like you think it affords you some kind of um, not just protection, but rather that you have the right to say whatever you want and because nobody's going to reach out and smack you or or uh, push you or or you know physically connect with you and so definitely meditation for um, uh, a, a good healthy dose of what's real and what isn't and what's of value and so what sometimes I feel that we're doing on social media is you're allowing everybody else to dictate who it is you are and you're believing it you know and you're being affected by it and so that you're totally under that influence whereas in meditation as said earlier that that supreme one is giving you an image of yourself in terms of eternity is showing you the power that you had the power that you have the power that you will reconnect with and re-emerge and um, makes me less needy of other people's approval and other people's opinions it's like who do i believe you know what everybody else is telling me about myself um yeah you'll get all those comments but in meditation why is god asking us to remember him he's asking us to remember him so that we can remember ourselves, <laughs> that we can remind ourselves of who it is we are, what we've become, and uh, you know, and how to become. I, I think one of the things of decency too is this aspect of usefulness, where you become of use to God and to humanity and uh, not least to your own self. And um, on the one hand, serious business, and on the other hand, that being has such a wonderful sense of humor that you can end up laughing at your own self and the games that you played um, until there was clarity about who you are. Okay, wonderful. I think I'm afraid the time is up, but uh, if Sister Raina can just have a quick question and a small answer from your side. Okay, small answer. <laughs> and a quick one question, yeah. Over to you, Sister Raina. Hello. It's not too... Yes, yes, it's not too quick, but you can decide. So the thing is, you were talking about uh, you know, people being rude. So uh, some people, uh, you know, are rude to you out of their habit and sometimes uh, they just want to get the better of you or, or sometimes they just want to test you how deep you are in waters, okay? How egoistic you are, these things. So is it, so how can, sometimes it's easy to distinguish why they're doing it and it's easy to respond if we can distinguish. So is it, um, how differently do I respond or how can I distinguish uh, what is the purpose behind, behind this person being rude to me? Well, I'm I'm trying to think of a practical situation, but maybe you can tell me um, what do you do? What is interesting that you've made the distinction between the two things, and which one is uh, why are they doing it? Uh, how they I detect is yes, yeah. If the person is uh, very uh, transparent or very you know simple minded. Uh, it's very easy to detect when they are being rude because you know uh, they will be they don't look very rude okay they might be very peaceful outside if they're doing it uh, you know out of the habit it shows their vibes also come but sometimes people are very cunning you know they are very uh, very smart in hiding their vibes as well <laughs> so 
in that case, uh, how do I distinguish? Or if I distinguish, is uh, how differently do I uh, do I respond? Well, I'm not I'm not uh, seeing that there could or should be a different way of responding, especially if you have seen, but what it is that's behind it. You know, there's, um, you know, why are people rude? Um, it, it can be, it could just be force of habit. Some people's nature, external nature is just like that. You know, it's like, say, for instance, the difference in, you know, um, say the East and the West, where in India, we, we came to learn that please and thank you wasn't so much used in terms of interactions, right? And so maybe to begin with, we think, well, they didn't say we did this, but they didn't say thank you, which would be, and it's a cultural thing. So it's not any intention of being rude. And so when, once you know that, then you're not going to react to it. That the, that the intention was not there. And I, I, I don't know if that is something that um, applies in, in your situation. But again, one is a cultural thing. And the other thing is sometimes, um, I, it's hard for me to imagine the situation where somebody's testing you. They want to see how you're going to react. And so if that's the case, then then it's easy, isn't it? You're not going to react, you know, because you know you're being tested. And so you want to pass the test. And so by all means, pass the test, but not for the other person. Pass it for yourself. Wonderful. Hats on. That's the answer. Pass it for yourself, not for others. Thank you so much for being so patient and decently answering all our questions. <laughs> Okay, so uh, with no request, we have seniors with us, Dr. Ashok Mehta first. And Hello, Mr. Dr. Mehta. Nice to see you. Shanti, long you time, man? long time. Oh, Om Shanti. I think Vadiman did a tremendous justice to the subject of licensing. We all want to be recent. Yeah. But most of the time, you know, there are situations when we fail. And in yeah. that case, I think it's a, it's a, we have failed in our tests of being yeah. totally spiritual in Baba's Gyan. Yeah. There's an expression but, that, there's an expression that my mother used to use, oh, you let yourself down a bag full. <laughs> Meaning that you you didn't live up to your own standards. You know? we, have to, we have to achieve that very high standard. Yeah. I think yeah. Most of us, we know that uh, we fail quite often in practice, dealing with simple situations. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's like uh, somebody presses a button and you lose uh, your patience or you lose your... Uh, you know, decency, if you want to call it that way. Yeah. I, I think it's a decency is a test for all of us to be continuously decent, all the time to be decent, and never to be indecent. Yes, never to descend. <laughs> decent and not descend. Yeah. But on the other hand, it, it's a simple thing. It's like, you know, rather than the big idea of like, you should have love for everybody. I, I can't say that that I love everybody, but but I know how to be decent. I know how to be respectful. I know how to be kind. These are the small things, but these are the things that are the building blocks that really um, create the whole structure, you know, piece by piece. Uh, decent man, good man, yeah. Sorry, Dr. Mehta, you are speaking something, but you have been muted. Please unmute. I don't know what has happened. Yeah, you have to unmute. Yeah, yeah. I think she has given us a lot of uh, good answers, good keys to test our decency. 
And I think the important thing is that to have respect and love. And I think that's that's the test for your decency, that you are respectful and loving, despite whatever is being told to you. Yeah. Thank you very much, Vadi Ben. It was very enjoyable. Thank you. Nice to see you after a long time. <laughs> yes. Hello, Claudia. Oh, Shanti. Good oh. morning. Good morning. <laughs> On our side. Uh, it was so much pleasure to be with you. It's like we are in the same room just talking to each other. Yeah. <laughs> it's so nice because you are so easy and talking about the sub this subject and I feel just it's a it's a pleasure to be we cannot be in the physical but at least in the zoom we feel like we are with each other talking about something so important in our life because at the end we see we have to be listened to our own selves that's the yeah. point <laughs> that's the point that's so and so what else can we do? So if we don't do that, so how can we, um, you know, Oops. be happy at the end? So if we are not listening to our own, so I think that she frozen. Um, Whoops, what happened here? Yeah, she got frozen. Yeah, she's got, no, she's got, for, okay, yeah, maybe she's what done happened? something. Yeah, I think I did something here. <laughs> yeah, but she's, we can hear your audio. But there's a lag of... There we go, yeah. there we go, there we go, there we go. I was trying to take a picture. There we go. So that, that's got frozen as good. That means we stay a little bit longer. <laughs> well, thank oh, you very much, Wadi. It was pleasure. so much pleasure to pleasure. be with you this moment. Thank, thank you, you for the much. invitation. Hope yeah. to maybe so, see uh, you. Yes, yeah. Manoj, bye. So thank you so much for the vote of thanks, both of you. <laughs> and uh, let me just, before I go on to the meditation, the closing meditation, which you will be doing for us. So I'll just do the announcements quickly. So as always, the next week we have a workshop, uh, sorry, the workshop is over. So we have the next episode, which will be 86th. And it's on efficiency. In Hindi, we call it Karya Shamata. So we have another yes, senior yes. joining with us, Mr. Denise Lawrence from France. We'll be sending you uh, the links as well and the invitations. And yeah, I forgot that uh, as Sister Anu has mentioned in the chat box, if there are any new participants who have joined today, quite a few actually were new, I felt. And if you want to be a part of the series, till the series will go until November Diwali this time, where we finish 100 episodes. So please share with us your WhatsApp numbers and also your email addresses so that we can send you all the materials as well. And as always, followed by the talk, we have the workshop as we're having it today. So a week after that. So it will be on Saturday, 23rd of March, very close to the beautiful festival of Holi. And we have another Holy sister with her sister, Marilyn. She'll be joining with us from Boston for the first time. And she'll be sharing as uh, Sister Wadi is doing today after the facilitation exercises. Uh, these are our email addresses and our websites. Please feel free to visit them. And if you have any feedback, comments, suggestions, queries, please email us as well. All these are recorded and they are available in different languages as well. And the episodes of the series and also the workshop episodes which we are doing today, all is recorded. So the links are here. I'll stop sharing the screen. And I just wanted to also say that... Uh, Sister Wadi and we had a small chat before I approached her. Like I was thinking of sobriety, but you said it has <laughs> it has not to be taken in that context because in the USA it has a different meaning. But though we say in India a sober person is a decent person, but it has a different connotation in the Western world. So therefore, we said, do you want to touch upon that or? No, needed. I was I was remembering that you know when when you asked me to take the topic of sobriety, I only see sobriety as somebody who doesn't drink alcohol. You know <laughs> that it could have been a problem. Sober means it, it comes across as you know somebody who's very serious and and what have you. Um, it's um, that's why I said 
let me let me go with decency because I feel decency is underrated and yet it's such a and and it's something that that uh, each and every one of us can work with. So Brian, not so much, but decency, yeah. <gasps> In the divine drama plan, it was you who was supposed to do the workshop talk decency. Thank you so much. And I know you had you just came from Madhuban right now. Yes. So yeah, so it's 9:45 for us in India. We go ahead with the closing meditation. And sister Anu, if you can quickly take because we can all take of us a quick photo. Yes. Yeah. Everybody, you can please uh, switch on your video. Don't want please. to miss this chance. Take a e electronic photo with you, uh, Sister Wadi. Oh. How long for the meditation, Manoj Bhai? Um, five minutes is is that okay? Five minutes, okay. Yeah. So you want a commentary, right? Yeah, is that okay with you? Uh, no problem, no problem. Okay, fine. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, everyone. I got the photo as well. Thank you. All right. And if there are some new participants, sorry, if there are new participants, please send it to Sister Vidhi or everyone. Uh, your email addresses because people are sending it to me anyway i'll send it to you all as well okay oh, done so over to the closing And finally, I listen to the call. Having ignored it many times before, Unknowing that I would respond at some time at the right time. Maybe when everything else had been exhausted, all adventures taken, all relationships explored, and something in the soul saying, Enough not. It's time. And in my hesitant agreement, something opened like a doorway. opening wider and encouraging me to come through. And there's a vast expanse of light and of space and with a sense of wonderment it's as if I'm being carried carried by a presence 
that I cannot see, but whose love and peace surround me and hold me and lift me and introduce me to another dimension. And this dimension of light and of peace is both new and also familiar. And I'm instantly at home. And the voice whispers, this is who you are. You are peace. And I'm surrounded and welcomed and embraced by the serenity. tranquility and belonging and I remember this is who I am this is my supreme parent So thank you so much once again. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, thank thank you for the opportunity. Thank, thank you. So thank you. Oh, Shanti. Oh, Shanti.